Hey guys, I'm back and I apologize for all the construction noise going on in the background, but it is what it is. So, what we're doing here today is based on multiple requests I've had from viewers of the channel. A little while ago, we did the one year of Battle Box Knife of the Month, and something that came up more than once is the request from viewers, from subscribers, to take a look at the Real Steel Bush Knife. Something that I had never tested out before and never messed with, but Given that it had come up multiple times, I figured it's something I better take a look at. And you know, you guys asked for me to put a video up of it, so I couldn't do it right away, but I, I'm doing it now. And so I went online, and Amazon being the wonderful marketplace that it is, not only did I find a fixed blade bush knife, but they had a folding one too. And I'm kind of a fan of the folders over the fixed blades myself. So I ordered one of each so we can take a look at, at each one of them. So just an unboxing and a, a quick little mini review of each one in a separate video so that you can you can watch both videos or you can watch only one if you're only interested in one. But then we'll come back, we'll do a separate video where we really test them out. We'll compare them to some of the Battle Box Knives of the Month and some other stuff more in depth. Today's videos are going to be... Don't worry. Uh, we've got air support on call for the duration of this video. We're covered. Uh, these videos that I'm gonna do today, and again, two separate ones, so you can watch both or whichever one you're interested in, this is just gonna be the unboxing, first thoughts, mini review, uh, and a look at the blades, and then later on we'll do the full-on test. So, without further ado, and before it starts pouring rain on me like it's been doing all weekend and all week, let's take a look at these knives. All right guys, welcome back. Continuing our Boker Real Steel Bonanza. So this is the Real Steel Bushcraft folder, which I found when looking for the Bushcraft uh, fixed blade. I didn't know there was a folder option and me being a lover of folding knives, I had to get this and check it out too. It's starting to rain, but we're gonna push through with this video. Uh, there are only two things that will stop the United States military and that is not finishing your computer-based training and lightning within five. Let's get into this. So it comes with a pouch, and you know what that tells me right away? There is not a clip on the knife itself. Oh well. And just like the fixed blade, it comes with a nice little real steel instructional sheet that have specs on here. It does. And a nice little cleaning care cloth. So here are the specs, a little bit smaller. It's a liner lock, D2. Blade length is 3.54 inches, so just a little smaller by half an inch than the fixed blade. Blade thickness is the same. Weight is a little bit less. Uh, it's 6.35 ounces. Actually, I have to check that if the weight is more or less. The weight is more. The fixed blade is 6.07 ounces. This is uh, heavier, 6.35 ounces, probably because you need all the, the opening and closing mechanisms. Sturdy pouch, belt loop snap closure. Oddly enough, this has a nice grippy pattern on the G10, whereas the actual uh, fixed blade bushcraft knife has that very slick, polished almost G10 finish on it. I, I just don't know why they would do that on, on one and not the other, but I'm already a fan of this, this kind of G10 finishing, just because it gives you a little bit more grip. I can tell it's got the same jimping on the spine there that the fixed blade does. You can see that inside the liners there, they've done some lightning for you, even though it's it's heavier than the fixed blade. They, they made an attempt there. This looks like this backspacer here is also made of G10, but you have the same red liners under the G10 scales. Also, not a fan, just on the outset, and you know, not to nitpick. I'd love a thumb stud there or something, but they give you these little fingernail grooves to open it up. It is a smooth opening knife though, I will say that. Uh, very smooth, like normally I, I, I would expect some resistance. This just wants to open up. In fact, let's see, if we just open it a little bit, opens right up for us. And that doesn't affect the lock, it doesn't get stuck or jammed or anything. So here's the blade, same Scandi grind and everything. 
You can see it's just, uh, if you think about what the fixed blade looks like, just a little bit more short and squat than the fixed blade version, if you compare the two right there. Pros and cons, some people might like that blade better, some might not. Um, overall, the length is just about the same, a little bit longer on the fixed blade because of the longer blade. I like the weight on this one too. It, again, it doesn't feel nearly as heavy as it w as it says it is. Um, I actually like the feel of this one better. Something about the weight and balance of it just feels a little bit better. All things being equal, I don't know, if I had to pick one over another, I'd be hard pressed. Very clean in there. Don't see any kind of oil. And that's interesting that these were shipped out. Normally when you get a high carbon steel blade, it's just caked and coated in, in protective oil when it, it shipped, but Boker didn't do that. I wonder if they knew it wasn't gonna sit on a shelf very long, like you were gonna buy it and take it home. This is kind of gonna smudge our paper test greatly with the rain falling, so let's get that out of the way now. And even in the rain, this blade, I mean, this paper is getting soaked. This blade just wants to turn it into little curly cues of paper, so sharp out of the box, razor sharp. I really like the feel of the folding knife better. I don't like the liner lock. I understand why they made it flush with the other side. It's a, it's a safety measure. It doesn't get hit and accidentally close. But the truth is I've never had that problem with the folding knife. Um, I'm sure it has happened, but it just, the way the jimping is in there, the jimping's nice. It, it kind of hurts to close the knife a little bit. Boy, I wish I had, ugh, I can get one of those clamp on thumb studs for it, but it just will not open that way. The design of the knife is really nice though. Um, Boker always puts out a good product. I'd also love to have just a clip on this knife so I could just carry this knife around. If it had a thumb stud and a clip and I could just carry this on a belt or in a pocket, it'd be perfect. I would love this knife. I, I, it's kind of a bulky knife, but I'd EDC this. It's a really good knife. So there we have unboxing, first impressions, little mini review of the real steel folder. So like I said in the fixed blade, if uh, there's specific things you'd like to see in a, in a test with this side by side versus the fixed blade, please let me know in the comments here and we'll incorporate it. I'm gonna get this stuff packed up and dried off and take care of this D2 steel because we don't wanna mess it up before we start doing the test. But I really do appreciate that you guys brought me the idea of what you wanted to see. You wanna see the real steel knives in action, so we're gonna do that. And until I get those uh, tests up, we'll have some more unboxing going on. We should have a Shit Hits the Fan Mystery Box in any day now. And whatever else you guys wanna see, I'm always open to your requests. So please don't be afraid to send them my way through personal message uh, or email or uh, just comment on a video somewhere. All right. I actually really enjoy this weather. I think I'm going to go for a little hike. So thanks for watching, guys, as always, and I'll be back again real soon.